Jane. Thanks so much for coming back to day number nine. Today I'm featuring the Simon Says Stamp Warm Hugs die. I made a few cards with some Distress Oxide ink blending and as a bonus I included a couple of Ho 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 cards. So let's get started. So these are the six cards that I made. I love large um, word dies that can actually take up a lot of space on a card. I made Distress Oxide backgrounds. I'll show you how. I just smushed the ink on and got it all wet. I made two similar backgrounds of the same colors and then I kind of switched up how I did the warm hugs. And I really love the way the snowflakes came on, out on this one. And this one has the um, blue warm hugs. And then I thought I'd just do a little non-traditional Christmas color, which is not even a Christmas color. I don't know why I'm saying that. And I went with pink and oranges and some ho ho ho's. So I went through my stash and I looked at all the background stamps that I have that would be good for this particular technique. And I really like the snowflakes. I like the leaves and berries. I do love the text, but I thought it was a little bit much with that big word die and then the present. I'm using my Misty for this project because it's easier when you have a large background stamp. I have a watercolor card, um, as you can see on the left, that already has a design on it. I'm using the other side. I'm stamping on the smooth side of this watercolor cardstock. I have cards in my shop and I did not like the way these turned out. I did fix them, so if you want to check them out. But anyhow, um, I'm hitting the cardstock with my anti-static powder bag, stamping it all up with Versamark ink, rubbing it all over with my microfiber cloth just to make sure I get a really good impression. And then I'm going to use some Hero Arts Clear embossing powder on all of the cards. You can use white. I tend to like clear better, but I think it doesn't really matter um, in this particular technique. And I'm just putting it, sprinkling it all over, and then I'm going to heat set it. And I did this for all six of the card bases. Um, so then I used this next Simon Says Stamp Leaves and Berries and did the exact same thing. And then I decided which presents did I want a horizontal card or a vertical card? I decided to go with a vertical. So I'm using the, doing the same thing with this presence background, hitting it with my anti-static bag, temporary tape. Now watch as a fail. I put the tape on the stamp set, close the door on my Misty, and I open it up and I'm like, huh, what happened? So I realized I put the tape, the cardstock on the wrong side. So I did it again. Hit it with my anti-static powder tool, Hero Arts Clear Embossing Powder, and heat set it. So now I'm grabbing my Distress Inks. I keep them in this little box, and I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. And I'm using Perfect Pearl's Perfect Pearl Color. And I'm putting it in a little bottle, this Nuvo um, spray bottle, and I'm shaking it up really well. And mini ink cubes work great for this because you're just going to take them and you're just going to rub them over your cardstock. I'm doing um, gradient shades of blue on these snowflakes and I decided to do a stripe um, pattern on these. And you can go back and add some more color if you think you don't have enough somewhere. Kind of blend it all in and just set it aside until you do your next background. So I'm using the exact same colors, only this time I decided I was going to smush them on. I was going to make more of a random pattern. And, you know, you can decide how much, how little you want, dark, light. It's really up to you. This is just a, let's just smush it on there and see how it all comes out um, activity here. And I just love when you add that little blueprint sketch in there, it really makes a difference. It makes the card pop. So I have this hard cutting board here and I'm using regular adhesive and I'm adhering this to the back of the card. I mean, yeah, to the back of the card and I'm using the heel of my hand to push it down because I don't want to get my fingers all inky. I'm going to take that spray bottle and shake it up really well and I am spraying a heavy layer of water on here. I wish you could see how much water, just kind of watch how many times I spray. There is a lot of water. It's puddled up. It's pulled up. And I'm setting it aside. And the reason I do the hardboard is I don't want it to run like in rivers. I want it to stay where it is, but I, then I want it to dry on its own. So now I'm doing the leaves and berries. And I went through and picked out a couple of greens. Um, and I'm just kind of randomly placing them on there. 
And this green red I'm putting on right now, I'm not really sure it's my favorite green, but it really came out nicely in this card, as you will see. So I'm, again, just swishing it on. This is random. This is in real time. I didn't speed it up. I wanted you to actually see the process on how long it takes. Then I took a little mini ink dauber, added a little red because it is a leaves and berries stamp set. And I thought, well, let me just put some random berries on there. Sped this one up for you, did some green gradient stripes, and then I'll do the same berries on these, just randomly place the red. Here those to my hardboard, generously sprayed it with water, and then I set it aside. Now, if you don't have a cutting board, you can put it on your, your uh, I used a plastic um, page protector kind of thing. I'll show you in just a second. But I will link to the boards that I use. They're not very expensive, and I use them over and over and over. So I'm using the pinks and greens here. I thought, well, I was going to do a birthday card, and I thought, nah, let me just stick with the Christmas theme. So this is a like a page protector that I have, so I'm adhering them to this, generously spraying it with water again. And I did use the clear embossing powder. It's really, really wet. And I'm going to set everything aside to dry while I decide what I want my warm hugs to look like. So I have all of my cardstock on a ring and I have, I can link to um, how I do that. I have some blog posts about that. And then I grabbed that Simon Says Stamp Warm Hug to Dye. I adhered everything to a little um, colored cardstock border frame. And then I'm putting some craft foam behind. Every card has the same. It has a frame. It has a craft foam. And then I adhere all of that to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch side folding note card. Four of the note cards are white and two of them are a cream color. I like to put something heavy on them so they dry flat. I did layer three warm hugs. I put them on the blue shadow that also comes with the die set. And then I cut layer this three of the blue and then I'm using glossy accents and I'm putting it on a piece of um, discarded packaging. I like to do it on packaging because it doesn't stick and then it doesn't mush and I don't make a mistake on my card. Now, I don't know what happened at the beginning of the video, but this is what I did to all of the backgrounds before I cut them down. I ironed them. And this is my um, Cricut Easy Press. You can use an iron. And you, do what, you want something soft below, a cloth, and then you put a piece of paper on top. And the reason you iron it off is that it melts that embossing powder and takes away the raised area of the embossing, embossing powder, and then you have a flat card. What you can do is take another piece of cardstock and put it on top and transfer that embossing powder and that ink to the other cardstock, but I just chose not to do that this time. So you need to iron everything just for a couple of seconds, maybe 10 seconds or so. So I decided to go the stick it route here on the um, these particular warm hugs. I thought, well, why am I not using stick it? Why am I putting all these little pieces of glue? And stick it is so much easier to use. And you can, I love stick it because you can reposition it. And when you're all done, then you can hear it down flat. So I decided for this card that I didn't want the warm hugs directly on the card. I wanted to diffuse it a little bit with some vellum. So first thing I'm doing is cutting out three of the warm hugs out of this green cardstock. And I use the exact same cardstock for the warm hugs that I do for the um, frame around the card. So I'm peeling off the back of the stick it. I'm adhering them as I always do. I'm not really good at this. I just do the best I can. Maybe it's my bifocals, who knows. So I put a little tape behind my card, kind of line up my vellum, fold it over, line it up on the mat, fold it over, make sure it's even top and bottom. That's why I love this glass media mat because I can use it to line things up. Cut off the extra. You don't even have to do that because you won't see it. Again, I put foam on the back of everything. So I'm laying this out, where is it, how does I want it to go? So again, I'm peeling off the back of this um, stick it, and I'm gonna stick that onto the vellum. And when I'm all done, I take my bone folder and hear it down tight. Now, I don't know if you know, but when you do words or anything on vellum, the vellum kind of pops up. So what my answer to this is to put a little glue on a scrap piece of cardstock, 
I grab my pokey tool. You can grab a toothpick. I just want dots, tiny dots of glue, and I dot underneath the thicker areas, and I put a hard, um, something heavy on top, and that will adhere it down flat so it doesn't pop up. That's like how I like to do it. So CZ Designs came up with this cute little hoe, so I thought, well, let me just turn these pink and orange cards into Christmas cards. So I, I stacked up, um, I think, two of the um, orangey hoes on the white background, and I'm gluing them all down to my card. I'm using my T-ruler. I put my first one on, and then I'm using my T-ruler to line them all up. And that's why I can get that side even. But then I decided, you know what, I don't really like that. <laughs> it, you know, you kind of live and you learn as you're doing things. And I wanted to pop them up. So if you, I use my 3M foam tape. And if you take the backing off, you can actually wrap it around and make it into circles like on the, on the O's. So I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm using my T-roller, putting the center one in first, lining up the left edges. Only this time it's popped up and it looks so much better. If you can see it in real life, it looks so much better. So I grabbed some pink and white twine from my stash, just wrapped it around about three times, tied it in a knot, and then I'm adjusting my strands because you know you want things to look like you didn't plan them, even though you planned every step of the way. And I'm gonna tie the bow and cut off the ends. And I actually, I did the string before I decided what I was gonna do with the card. I just felt like that I wanted some twine on this card for whatever reasons. I usually don't have a plan when I make cards. I just kind of get the dies out and kind of wing it. So I put one hoe on this one. I did the opposite of the colors. So now we're back to that warm hug so that I did the glossy accents on it. So I did adhere that to a piece of vellum backing. The shadow is vellum. Again, I love the vellum because it diffuses, it diffuses it without blocking it, if that makes any sense. And because I don't want the ink to squish out on the vellum, I take my finger and pat it down and kind of so it doesn't squish. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to add some bling. You know, what's, what's cards without blink? Bling, blink. They all blink too. Honeybee has these great um, colored rhinestones that I love, So I and they're all one size, so I put one in each of the snowflakes, and I did a lighter color at the top and a darker color at the bottom. For the other cards, I went through my stash. I have all these different color button things, and I use those. I use my Nouveau um, Aqua Shimmer Pen on the Warm Hugs. I'm trying to show it to you, see if you can see it. It's really hard to see. And then I don't know if you know, but you can color rhinestones with Sharpie. So I needed some pink ones, so I colored mine with my Sharpie. And um, they come out really well. I use, you know, whatever color Sharpie you have is, is what color your rhinestone can be. And there are my two pink and orange Christmas cards. So what do you think about that color for Christmas? I think I'm going to use them for thank you cards, actually. I'm always trying to think of thank yous as I make cards throughout the holiday season. Here's the two blue cards. Again, same technique, totally different looks in cards, different types of sequins and rhinestones. I really love the way they came out. I think I like the green ones best. What about you? Thanks so much for stopping by. I really I hope you enjoyed this project and go on and make yourself some warm hugs cards. Thanks a lot.